If it didn't have one of those things, like let's say it didn't include the tea house, that would not be considered a... It would be considered really pretty, but it's not considered Blue Willow. Blue Willow. Hi everyone, welcome to Capital Vintage Charm School. Today we have Paige Muneer from The Pink Clutch to talk to us about blue and white patterns. Paige, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I feel so honored that you asked. I am so thrilled that you are giving us your time. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So Paige, you were just such a natural fit for this because your collection of blue and white and your house is just fantastic. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my absolute favorite homes on Instagram. Thank you. Um, so we appreciate you welcoming us in and giving us a little tour of some of your favorite blue and whites. Um, to kind of get started today, I was thinking, you know, about blue and white patterns. And I think the most popular one or the one that kind of first comes to mind is blue willow. Would yes. You you think so too? Well, um, because I think it's the most recognizable. I think when people talk about blue and white, um, especially when you're talking about China, you know, obviously porcelain's a little bit different, but when you're talking about China, I think people think blue and white, and then it's just the blue willow pattern is just what they see in their head. So what does, what does blue willow mean in terms of, I, I isn't there certain things that the, the pattern has to have for it to be considered blue willow? Can you kind of yes. walk us through that? So I, just a backstory, um, about three months ago was at an estate sale and, um, you know, you see the pictures online and it was like every room was filled with every corner of like blue willow. So I end up going to this estate sale and when I get there, I find out, you know, she was like the secretary of the Blue Willow Society. And I mean, it was everything from the wallpaper to the drapes to <gasps> little paper coasters. I mean, when I tell you it was everywhere, it was everywhere. Jack and pot. Yeah. So before the sale even started, they took out two huge truck pulls of what they considered to be the best. I don't know what that was because what we landed upon was, uh, was the best as far as I was concerned. So I don't even know what left out of there. I mean, I wanted to peel the wallpaper off the wall, but um, <laughs> when I came home, I actually decided, you know, that I would write a blog post about it. And I did, and I did a lot of research because, you know, as somebody who's loved it for many, many years, I didn't really, I myself had a bunch of assumptions that were not true. So, um, Blue Willow is part of a group of items under the umbrella of chinoiserie. So, chinoiserie, a lot of people get confused and think it's an Asian, I hope I'm saying that right, um, politically, but, and, you know, uh, Chinese exports Asian theme. And it actually is not, it's actually English. So it's the English interpretation of their cultures and pieces and whatever. So chinoiserie really is English and it's their mimic of what the Chinese, the Asians love. And when I say that, like truly, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm not sure how you, which reference I should be using, but my heart's in it. So, um, but it's actually English. So, um, Blue Willow, and I have a plate here. Oh, great. Um, is, this is one of our dinner plates. I was like, I don't think I have that right set up. <laughs> um, so it originated in 1780 by engraver Thomas Mitten. Okay. And I know we're going to talk about Blue Canton in a bit. And that actually is the, um, Chinese version and it came way before this pattern here. Oh, so the success of that pattern in China, Thomas Minton decided to create his own version. Um, and there are specific things that um, need to be included for it to be considered Blue Willow. Okay. And this is an old piece from, this is actually um, a set of plates we inherited from my in-laws. And this was like their regular dinner plate. Um, the English plates are thicker. Okay. 
much thicker. Um, they're always, they're almost like an earthenware, if okay. that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. They're not fragile in any way, shape or form. I mean, obviously if it fell, it would break, Right. but it's a much thicker plate and it was considered to be, you know, the everyday wear. There was nothing truly special about it. Um, where we've made it more like, Ooh, it's blue willow. Like it was supposed to be used as your everyday wear. Okay. Um, the blue plate special came on a blue willow plate. That's why it's called blue plate. Yeah. So oh, that one was divided. You know, you're meeting three on the blue plate that was divided, but that was a very thick blue willow plate. That is so um, cool. I didn't know that. That neither did I. I had to like all these things looked up. Um, so it includes um, to be considered blue willow, and this is obviously transfer wear, which we'll talk about later. Um, it includes a, and I want to get this right because there's a poem that goes with it. Okay. But it's the Chinese pine trees, which would be these here. Okay. And it would look like an apple or an orange tree. Okay. Um, the bridge here, little tiny bridge here, and it will have three to four men on it, typically three. Okay. Um, a fence which is down here. Okay. Um, a boat, which is over here. Okay. A tea house, which is what the pagoda is actually called, the tea house. Oh. And then two birds that are in flight. Okay. So there is a popular little um, fable about how that all came to be. Um, and from what I understand, part of the research online says it's absolutely true. Part of it says it was something that was dreamed up to sell the pottery because obviously his competition was, um, the Canton in China. Um, but these would be star-crossed lovers. These birds here would be star-crossed lovers that, um, from two different families that were not supposed to get married. Um, and on the day of their wedding, they disappeared and they are, you know, two birds in flight. Oh, so, no. and I read it both ways. Some people truly believe that the fable is true. Some people truly believe that it was, you know, dreamed up to sell the dishes. So if it, if it didn't have one of those things, like let's say it didn't include the tea house, that would not be considered. A it would be considered really pretty, but it's not considered blue willow. Blue willow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very if that makes sense. And like I said, that um, there's there's been a number. So this, from what I, the research that I found, this is the oldest pattern known to date, um, and it has been in production ever since the 1780s. So it is very, very old. Um, I mean, not this specific plate itself, but right. it's been in production since then. It was mass produced in the 80s by Johnson Brothers, 1980s. Um, but it is the, it, it has been in some sort of production since Thomas Minton started it in 1780. Now he sold it to Thomas Turner who turned it into a mass production product. Um, but this was his original design. And as you can see, like the difference between, and I actually don't have any Canton in the house. I went downstairs, I was like, of course I have, I got nothing. <laughs> um, but that will, will include, um, a tea house, a bridge, a river, the mountains, a boat and a tree, but never any people. Oh, um, never any people. And one of the largest productions of Canton currently would be Matahedda. Oh, so what they do is not Blue Willow, it's Canton. Yes. And it's just as, I mean, it's just as valuable. Sure. It's actually the blue Canton itself has been around longer. So it's just as, it, it's kind of the, um, where, where's what I'm going? So like Rose Medallion, some people love, you know, what there's more than one pattern of Rose Medallion. So some people love what we all consider to be Rose Medallion. And some people love like varying degrees of, um, I, this is my choice. Um, the Canton is, like I said, just as beautiful. It's just different, if that makes sense. Would, does the um, makeup of the plate matter in a Canton? So would that be thinner? 
than like a blue willow or it would just depend on the manufacturer it would depend completely depend on the manufacturer it's because the japanese um version of this pattern is a thinner plate gotcha it's actually looks older um, and some of it will be, some of the pattern will be blurred. We'll talk about the transfer where when you get there, some of the pattern may be blurred, but it's actually a little bit thinner plate, but like the blue plate specials that I was talking to you about before where they're divided, they're actually very, very thick. Um, and they were meant to go, you know, through your dishwasher, through the oven. I mean, it is earthenware. So it's meant to hold up. Like this one says, you know, dishwasher, microwave, oven proof, like. I mean, it tells you right on the back. Like, is that Churchill? This is Churchill. Yes. This is my in-laws. Um, and we got quite a bit of it. Um, but you know, I from love that you use like, that. we use it every day. And to be honest with you, like, I mean, I've got three kids and we always have people over, I mean, obviously pre-quarantine but um <laughs> I'm just saying like we're not having parties <laughs> uh, um and some of the newer pieces like my Johnson brothers and stuff because I do have both I've just picked up like some that I love or whatever have chipped and this older stuff has stood the test of time so it had it has my two, thumb two thumbs up. two thumbs up yeah um the the pink clutch seal of approval <laughs> yes. I mean it's it, it holds out. And so yeah. we have quite a number of dishes. I'm hoping, you know, when the kids all have their own homes, they want, you know, six or eight of it, they'll probably be like, oh my God, those dishes. But the point being like, it stood at the test of time. And I'm hoping at some point they'll, you know, they'll want it, want it because they ate it on it every day. So you keep talking about transferware. Can you explain what that is? Yes. Yeah, so transferware is actually a should have got, well, this is, this piece is kind of a good example. So transferware is when you have a pattern, this is like an older English piece. Okay. It's when you have a pattern that was actually made on a copper sheet and that copper plate is transferred to paper and that paper is transferred to your pottery. So when you have transferware, and this is really not a good example because all of the pattern seems to line up to look for a place um yeah so here um i don't know if you can see that but like right here at the bottom where yes. the dark place is they've lined up that pattern and you can tell it's like a double so basically you've got a pattern that you've drawn out on a copper plate and that gets flipped onto paper and then the paper gets put into the pottery to make the pattern and you've got obviously you know, your pattern here might be one copper plate, this might be another, and then your center. So you'll always find, like I said, this is not a good example. You'll find like a seam at some point. Okay. Um, and that is might not a defect. Darker. Yes. So okay. that's like, that's not a defect. That's just where the piece has come together. Um, so don't deter yourself. I mean, if you love it, like I am very drawn to these old sure. light blue and white English pieces. Um, I would not have seen this and been like, oh, well, it's not as good. Um, Cause this is actually a very old piece. Um, and same thing with like the crazing, a lot of people and a lot of what I sell, I just assume people understand that the crazing is normal and shows age and it's supposed to do that. It's like this one is actually not dirty. It's just crazed. Um, and you'll see on the inside, it'll gray maybe a little bit. Right. That's just normal with age. I mean, it's, it's a piece that stood the test of time. It's going to hang out. So, so the, the Canton, remind me this one more time. The Canton was made in Japan. China. China. Okay. It was made so, in China and Thomas Minton was, we shall say inspired okay to create um a pattern of his own when he saw the success of the other one so i guess you would call that like the modern day while they're doing so well what can i do that like chimes into this obviously he saw that it was you know being used and purchased and you know it was he could see that coming into england so Perfect. why not fill a need and um he did so 
Paige, when you flip it over and sometimes on the back of the Blue Willow dish, it would say Japan. Yes. Can you explain what that is and if that's something we need to be on the lookout for? So it's still a great pattern. It's not an, as old as an English piece. So, you know, you've got your pieces that were produced in England. And then right. obviously Japan is like, wow, that's selling so well. So I'm going to take the same transfer and sell it over here. And then you've got like later in the 1980s, Johnson Brothers being like, well, I can produce that too. So you've just got a lot of people producing this pattern that was developed by him, if that makes sense. Completely. Completely. Yeah. That's so it's not, I mean, I have both. I have, basically I have all three. I've got some Johnson wear or some Johnson Brothers plates. I've got some Japanese plates. Um, and I've got some English plates. The Japanese plates sometimes tend to be a little bit darker blue and white. Um, and I actually think they're beautiful, especially on the wall because oh. they've got that like deeper blue. Oh, that's that interesting. You. Yeah. yeah. A little so, bit more skews, maybe a little bit navier. Okay. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. So here's a little side note. I was like looking at the notes that I'd made. One of the things that you can tell about the Japanese patterns is that the birds are a little plumper before you yeah. flip it over. But to me, I feel like the color is always darker and the plate is a little bit thinner, but the birds are apparently a little bit fatter. Very cool. So who knew? <laughs> maybe, they're, maybe, they, maybe they're birds. I, I got nothing. <laughs> they're better fed. <laughs> better fed. Right. Nobody, nobody eats. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but their birds are apparently plumper. I no. love it. Um, what are some of the other popular blue and white patterns that you like? So I actually um, am drawn to, I think I like blue because I feel like it's timeless. Like no yeah. matter, I mean, obviously I've got some jars behind me. I've got some reproduction um, lamps on my desk. Like I just feel like it's, there's something about blue that pretty much transcends time. Like, obviously, you know, like blush pink was like, oh, blush pink. Now everybody's like, I mean, for the love, like yeah. <laughs> warm pink, but blue really in any shade, shade, it's kind of like green. Green is always, you know, in fashion. Um, and for me, I'm drawn to the blue just because I think it's so pretty. My grandmother always had a huge collection of Delph. Um, mm -hmm. Here's a great example of that here, my little pen container. Um, and she always had a collection in what I considered to be like an old fashioned China cabinet. So it wasn't, it looked more like a bookcase per yeah. se, it was all glass with glass shelves. And I remember just like sticking my nose like on the case and just staring at all the pieces because, you know, they had like little tiny windmills and little tiny shoes and little tiny people and um, little like V-shaped birds. And, um, so for me, it's, I've always loved blue and white. Um, I got a collection of like the spoon dishes where like all six were different when I got married. Like I just loved it. Um, so I am drawn to a number. We obviously use our blue willow, right? Um, but I am actually more drawn to the, um, like I said, the English, like pale blue and white, um, the trays and the pieces and stuff like this always catch my eye. Um, I also really like blue Danube. Um, if that's familiar to you. Yes. Um, and I'm a new collector and I have a piece somewhere. I think it's in the kitchen, um, of a pattern called blue fluted. But it's a little bit more, it's basically a white plate and it has a tiny blue pattern on it. And then the, actually the edges are a little bit more scalloped and then they're cut, like cut out. So it's a little more um, dainty maybe. Um, it's in my, in my opinion, it's, it's just beautiful. Like it's beautiful. I would not want to use it. I'd be afraid I'd like break it. Um, and then another really good one for me is um, the blue Italian by Spode. Yes, it's so. Spode cool. is another really good um, old English pattern. I mean, obviously not as old as the Blue Willow, but it's old. Um, and there's a number of blue 
sped patterns, but the blue Italian just happens to be one of my favorites. So for some of these patterns for like Blue Willow and some of these, do you, is your collection a good mix of vintage and some new pieces? Yes. And it really just depends on what I find and where and what it is. So like, for example, this, you know, little creamer, I use it for flowers. I mean, I don't think I'd ever put, this one's pretty old, so I'm not sure I would serve cream out of it. I don't know why I wouldn't. There's there's nothing unsafe about it. But for me, it looks so pretty with like some short, you know, roses. Yeah. So I use pieces. I mean, I buy what I like. Um, and I use buy it. something if it's chipped? Yes. So I actually have a really good example of that. I bought a tobacco jar at an estate sale last summer. And it was like $30 and it's about yay big. Uh, And I took the lid off and there's a chip and I was like, I love it. Never going to show it without the lid. Even when I put flowers in it, you're not going to see the chip. So that stuff doesn't bother me as much. Um, uh, There's, I have a few pups that have been repaired um, and I love them. So there's actually a process. Um, where China has been repaired and they've like filled it with gold. Oh yes. I've seen that. It's beautiful. And there's an actual word for it and it is not coming to my mind. So I apologize for that. But so, so, um, when my husband was sick and, um, I, we were in the hospital, somebody painted a picture for me and it looks like, um, I think I have it framed in here. I think it's framed upstairs, but it's like, a, it, it almost looks like a cross, but then it's a blue, like blue cross. And then part of it's like sealed with gold. <gasps> and so, you know, I think that's a way of like expressing to people, you know, life happens when you use your pieces and they are going to get a chip or two. Sometimes they were chipped before you bought them, whatever, but they, they're no longer not useful to me. Right. And I think, the inclusion of the blue or I mean, I'm sorry, the gold just makes it even more maybe treasured because it was like filled with gold. Like I mean, it's like 24 karat gold. Yeah. I mean, it's not just like, you know, gold spray paint, like right. I mean, <laughs> filled, filled to be like made, not even made whole, but like made better. Right. If I that think makes there's sense. such character in, in the chips and the crazings and the I think the crazy thing gives it so much character because, you know, it lived a whole life before it got to me. And I don't know how long, I mean, like, for example, this piece was one of three that I bought that day. So it was a taller picture, this picture, and then a um, sugar pot, which holds my little little creamers at the um, coffee station. I mean, it lived a whole life. So the crazy thing to me, I mean, I don't know if it came on a boat. I don't know if it was like, you know, some little precious man's water. To me, I I could make up a story that fast about where it came from. So before, you know, the pandemic and we were all locked inside, um, my husband and I are big history buffs. And for his 40th birthday, I took him up to, um, we did kind of a little tour of the Northeast and visited residential homes and things like that. Okay. And one of the things that we learned, and I just love this so much, one of the things that we learned is Abigail Adams would bring Mm -hmm. back um, blue and white chinoiserie pieces from England and sell Mm -hmm. them over here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's kind of like the OG vintage reseller. And I just thought that was so fun. So you have to think, right? I mean, some of this stuff has been around, you know, since the, you know, the late 1700s. So when they came to America, like what was in their chest? Yeah. You know, like what, how old is a piece or, you know, how does it get from England? Yeah. You know, where a lot of this made and stored and loved on over here. Well, it comes in a crate. I mean, somebody, you know, brought it over here. I'm with you. I love thinking about the history and how it made its way here. And then how many Thanksgivings it may have been on a table for and it's so special to me like I I'm truly 
especially if I'm buying for myself, a tiny crack, a chip, or whatever. Me too. I don't even think twice about it. Me too. I mean, selling it, I'm really honest about where those are. Um, can some people, that's not their desire, and I support that. Um, but I have a lot of people that, you know, I mentioned crazing, and they're like, sold. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I think the colors You're my people. are crazy. So pretty. I love when it gets like kind of like you said, that gray color, but then it mixes with that brown sepia color. I, I love it. It's I, just oh, so pretty. I know. Well, Paige, if you have a quick minute, I'd love to pick your brain on a couple of questions that I ask everybody so we can learn a little bit more about you. Okay. What is your China pattern? So we actually have um, our like wedding china is um royal dalton and it's called princeton okay and it's a white plate that has a very tiny little navy um pattern on the outside we use it rarely which makes me sad um but what i collect is actually a mitten um pattern and it's called cockatrice Okay. So it has like a weird looking bird in the middle. Comes in like a green, a blue, and a pink. But the green is my favorite. It's got green and yellow and orange and a little bit of blue. It's beautiful. And it's hard to find. Do you use that? I don't. It's on the wall in our bedroom. I do. I've never used it. Never. I mean, it's super special to me. Um, and I don't have enough per se to do anything more than like a salad plate on a table. And I think if somebody broke it, my heart would like. Bust open, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm like, you yeah, don't touch those. Your mommy's pretty plate. Yeah, don't, don't make me choose, okay? No. <laughs> exactly. So what are you currently on the hunt for for your house? Um, we have, so a couple of things on my list. Um, I am about to embark on our basement den, which has been kind of just like a, for lack of a better word, like a junk hall hang out for the kids. Um, and we only have two more years with my daughter. So I definitely want to like make it, you know, somewhere where, I mean, you invite the kids over, all the kids need to be at your house when you have older kids my words. Um, so I'm starting to collect for that. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, I really honestly could never bring another thing home and our house would be fine. I think the disease of being in resale is that you see something that you really, really love. So I'm at the point where I have to do like a one in one out. Um, I recently found two beautiful Staffordshire lamps and I mean, I had to like put them in and then somebody had to go into the sale. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm lucky because I have a source for resale that way, but I mean, I'm at a place where it's, I definitely collect and I definitely enjoy it, but I'm not in that place anymore where like every drawer has like a pile of something. Right. That makes sense. Oh. Like I used the last year to really hone in on collecting. Isn't that interesting how we all sort of had a minute to really look and say, like, what do we really love? It's funny. I've had this conversation with a lot of people and everybody was like, God, what a great opportunity for us to really look at our house and say, I don't love it and I'm going to get rid of it because I only want to be surrounded by things that truly bring me happiness. So obviously everybody struggles in the pandemic, right? Like everyone, whether you lost a job or, you know, a person that did, or you know, someone who died from COVID or what, whatever it is, we've all struggled and we've all, whatever the joy in the last year for me is I felt like somebody took my life and kind of took the controller and pushed pause. Um, and there were a, a few months where it was just us in this house and, um, we were quarantining separate, sadly, from my oldest child who lives not even 10 minutes away. I mean, we saw him and, you know, he would come over and hang out in the yard, whatever, but we really on a daily basis were quarantining away from him. And 
I had what I considered to be like the gift of a lifetime, like all, uh, you know, four to five months of just two teenagers who would never choose to, be choose home to do this <laughs> every day, all day, all night, whatever. I mean, I got one kid that like wakes up in the morning and is like, ah, and then comes home and is like ah, in bed. I mean, she just, that's, she lives on the go. And so during that time, you know, like we spent a lot of time around the table during dinner and then, you know, playing cards after. And I started like looking around and finally I was like, why do I have China in the dining room, the chest in the dining room, the whole chest downstairs. Like I really started thinking about what I wanted and kind of what I was doing. And it gave me such the gift of I had so many beautiful things and I do love to resell them. I really get a joy out of finding something at an estate sale and being like, oh my gosh, somebody is going to love this. I mean, yeah. it's really almost a high. Yes. I don't know how to better describe it. I find so much joy in doing that. So, and I've done vintage resale in the past. I've done it two other times. It was very successful. Um, and I thought, you know, I think what I need to do is use this time where like sponsored blog posts are not a thing and we're not doing outfit shoots and, you know, like my photographer is not coming over and really think about like, and this is a terrible word, but like, and like, cause I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but I just kind of dabbled in it on stories and was like, you know, I, I redid this room and I have like, six jars like does anybody want them and it was crazy so I did kind of launch into that on October 1st and it's been wildly successful for me and it's filled such a I think once we got to the end of like we have to be in 24 7 you only go out for like whatever and I could start kind of thinking about going out safely um, you know, finding an estate sale was like the creativity. I think I was craving. Yeah. If that makes sense. Completely. Are you so, finding that the estate sales are better or worse than they were pre pandemic in Atlanta? Like better beyond like what, like in terms of like the, the things that you're seeing are the, are the, like here in DC, I don't feel like we're having as many as frequently when they have them, there's like four or five things that I think are good, but the house isn't like stocked the way it would have been before. I don't know. I'm just not, I, I haven't been like, you know, wowed. So, you know, I think what's interesting and I have a couple of, like I told you, my best friend lives in um, Alexandria. And then I have a really good friend who lives in Boston. And I think the difference with the pandemic and where you live is how much people are getting out safely. Yeah. Like obviously my weather is more mild. Right. So it's not unusual for me to stand, you know, outside or to go to like an outdoor flea market or to go to like, you know, that isn't seen or does not feel dangerous to me. Right. Where, you know, up in like Boston, I have a dear friend that lives in Boston. And I said to him, you know, like we've all now had this, if you want to quarantine, um, for two weeks and then come here, like, you know, you can get away from the cold weather. What? And he said to me, like, yeah, I'm not leaving until I can get a um, vaccine. And I was like, so like, the more I thought about it, I was like, your weather is different and, you know, whatever. And I was so, what's, I guess the word I'm looking for. I was so um, almost like respective and respectful of like how different people are doing this yeah, and how people feel like their sick, sa- whatever their safety level is. Um, I- I'm just enamored by that, but to get back to your estate sale comment, I feel like the estate sales in our area have like blown up. Really? Yeah. So they were a little bit quieter starting the year, which is great. Cause I mean, I had stock and I needed nothing. <laughs> that doesn't mean I didn't go like, but I had nothing. I needed nothing. So, um, but like, for example, this week, I think I've got 
you know, eight hearts that I'm like, it, there's at least two or three things. And I will go to an estate sale and like get there early and get the two or three things I want. And then I'll just like ditch. Yeah. So it's, I will go for a couple of things. There is one that I'm like, I literally will go and probably want to buy the whole house. <laughs> I love when you said earlier that you were trying to rip the wallpaper off the wall. Those are my favorite. When I walk in and I'm like, can I buy the doorknob? What about the light switch? Uh, that air I don't even that? know how to, yeah, like I told you, it's like almost a high. Like you walk yeah. in and you're just like, huh? So yeah. here's an interesting story. I was actually um, going to an estate sale with one of my little estate sale buddies because I go shopping with, you know, a number of different people. And we were in a house that's not that far from me. And a lot of times when you're in a house, you know, there'll be this like amazing wallpaper that you see in the bathroom. And then somewhere in a closet, there's like leftover and they sell it for like $5 or some ridiculous thing. Love that. So I, got, I had gotten like two weeks earlier, this wallpaper that I can't even describe to you. It's blue and white. It is stunning. And I probably have, I mean, you know, it's the box that it shipped in and I probably have like one three quarter roll and then like a bunch of partials. So we were in this house and they had a bunch of, you know, wallpaper literally in a closet that was not even open. So I pull it out and I'm like, it's $5 for the whole box. Like, yeah, whatever. So, you know, I see it and my friend Nicole's like, oh, wow, you found some wallpaper. And I was like, yeah, she's like, what are you going to do with it? And I'm like, nothing. I just refuse to leave it behind. Yeah. <laughs> like, so we pulled it out and we looked at it. It was pretty, you know, and then I said, well, it's on the wall. It's in their closet so we went and looked at the and we were both like yeah it's pretty it's really pretty like we can't it turned out to be like I think five dollars a roll there were three or four rolls I mean it was basically nothing contact paper right like yeah you would spend more target contact, contact paper exactly yeah. so I ended up gifting you know handing the box to her I always say I gifted it to her because when we, so I gifted gifted her this box which she then bought so then she goes home and she's really good about researching and come to find out it is listed, listed as the most expensive wallpaper ever made. Um, it, it's, you know, Jackie O had it, Patricia Altshul has it. Um, and it's, you just never, you never know. know. She ended up putting it in the back of her bookcases and are done. It's beautiful. And it looks almost like, kind of like camo it's all these greens and browns it's kind of like camo but it actually is just trees upon trees upon trees upon trees oh. uh, so every single time she shares a picture or whatever I always text her and like remember who gifted that to you like, <laughs> that's my don't forget. <laughs> I mean I was not truly like I was just not gonna leave it behind I was gonna line a drawer with it do something yeah. with it yeah but it was it's perfect for her but you just never know what you're gonna find at an estate sale. I mean, I found everything from, you know, neck massagers to um, the most expensive wallpaper in the world. Yeah. So if you had to choose between like a thrift store and an estate sale, what would you choose? Or excuse me, a thrift store and an auction. Thrift store, because I think that's a good one though. Um, there's, there's pluses to both. I just bought something from an auction last weekend that I'm picking up today at one that I'm super excited about, but you know, in that auction, it's kind of like, you know, an eBay auction. You're like, am I going to, I mean, you stalk it right? and it like takes up all this time. There is a little bit of a, oh, I got it, but you know, like a thrift store, you know, you walk in and it's yours. Yeah. And I feel like most times with thrift stores, a lot of people don't don't know what they have Agreed. so usually with an auction they've done some sort of research you know they know that that pup is worth more than the right money you're gonna walk away with would you a rather go to an estate sale or a uh, flea market estate sale mm -hmm. I mean I think I'm an estate sale addict <laughs> well they're so good the ones that I've seen you bring stuff home from I'm like I wish ours were that good they really are so good. And I think for me, it's so much more than just walking in and finding something I love. You know, a lot of times you'll find a home that is in 
completely 100% like someone stopped time on it. So you get to like walk back through, or you've got these floors that you're just like, can you even believe they get to like walk on these every day? I mean, it's a whole experience, you know, the wallpaper, the paint, the, it's kind of like walking through a museum that you get to buy from. Yeah, it's, it is. I I mean, even the smells, like that was kind of one of the things that like that old book smell. I love a good old lady home. (gasps) Love it. Me too. Love it. Good candle wax. Yeah. I'd be burning Uh that 24-7. So it's like. My car smells like that a lot. Uh Yeah, my car smells like that a lot. And the kids will get in and they'll be like, what is that? And I'm like, those are my old things. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. No, like the linens and the drapes and and the sheets. I bought a bunch of sheets at a sale probably a month ago. Like sheets, like amazing sheets um, that I will resell in the spring when we do like, you know, spring refresh. But yeah, they all have that like, mm, yeah, just kept, you know. Like an old house that has that like pipe smell. Yes. You know, I'm not a smoker or anything like that, but I love that like. This is somebody's yeah. grandpa smell, you know? I know. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, grandpa. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, like hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, okay. So I know this is going to be like asking you to pick your favorite child, but what is your favorite vintage find? I think my staff is your lamps. Yeah. I bought both of them for not even a hundred dollars a piece. And they're ridiculous, beautiful. I love your collection. Like, I mean, it's kind of where you're like, should I offer them more? Like, do they not know what they have? (laughs) And a lot of times people know what they have and they really just want to sell it. Yeah. But I feel guilty, you know? I mean, I feel guilty. They're my two favorite things that I've gotten, hands down. Sorry, I have a like pup loving on me. That's okay. I'm like, if I don't that's stressed out because your baby um what so, is your prized family heirloom so i wrote about this recently um in from my side of the family it's a mantle clock um that was my grandmother's that my parents parted with and um it's like the like the half moon you know demi yeah. shape um and the way it sounds, the way it sounds when you crank it, the the whole thing about it just takes me right back to being seven years old and sleeping at my nana's. Um, on my husband's side of the family, we got my in-laws dining room table that they got the day they were married. Um, it was a wedding present from her parents, which means the, so much to me that we get to like you know, use it every day. And then we also got my husband's grandmother's on. So that would have been, well, I guess they're both white gifts. Um, we got my husband's grandmother's silver collection and it's the whole, you know, it's like a box. It's like four layers, everything's monogrammed. Um, I shared it the other day in stories. I saw it. It was so I was like, I don't even know what it's called. Um, and I got so much information on it. And then we also have his mother's, um, sterling silver napkin ring that was part of her mother's, um, collection. And so there's like a monogram on one side and then her name on the other. That's what I want to get for, I want to start collecting for, um, for us. I want everybody in the family to have a sterling silver engraved napkin ring for us to use for all of our like family occasions and Christmas. Yeah. So that's now on the list for me. My friend, Nicole happened upon a set of six, not that long ago for basically a song. Um, and part of me is like, do I stock it when she sells it or do I just wait <laughs> and find my own? There's a great, um, dealer at Scott's in the North building that has a huge collection of ones with names. Um, and so, you know, you'll be like, I'm looking for a Thomas 
and she'll say like, these are all the Thomases or I'm looking for a William. And she'd be like, well, this is all I have in William. Um, and some of them are really pretty and unique. I mean, beautiful and unique. And I've thought about that. Um, and then I also thought after sharing my mother-in-law's the other day that I think it would be cool to have them, you know, with like, because all the linens and the silver and everything in the house, according to Emily Pez, should be my monogram. Right. And then all the barware should be the husband's. Right. Um, so in ancient times, I mean, I say ancient, but you know what I'm saying? Like that would be part of their dowry. So yeah. all of the, all of the, um, sterling silver would have my monogram on one side and then their names on the other. Um, and I've thought about that. Like we have a great, um, source here in town for sterling. Um, and Beverly Bremer does a great job of, so, you know, like, I'm like, do I go find it? Do I do different ones? Like I'm in that like right. space of, cause I very much think, I mean, and I know this is sad, but I very much think now when I look around, I'm like, oh, you know, like this picture, which means the world to me, like, will my kids want this? Will it get sold for $20 in the state? So like, I think about that. So there are certain things that I definitely have written down and been like, mm, no, you will take that. <laughs> you will <And> love it. <laughs> you will love it. And it will stay in our family forever. And if you don't want it, you will offer it to your brother, or your sister. Like that's how this works. Like there are certain things that I feel pretty passionate about. Um, Do the kids reciprocate that? Are they... I mean, I know they're kids. I know they're teenagers. I know they don't care about any of this kind of stuff right now, but do you think that this is the sort of thing that they will care about later? Are they into- I mean, I hope, I hope so. So like I started a sterling, not a sterling, a silver plate pattern for my daughter. Um, and, you know, I started collecting whatever. And finally I told her about it a couple of years ago. And she was like, I think the thought that I was like out and shopping and collecting for her, I mean, it's not at all her style. It's way more mine. Um, to be honest, like she didn't really have a style, I guess. At 16. I was going to say, but she probably won't develop that until she's older anyway. And I feel like we always kind of default back to our moms or grandmothers Correct. because that's Correct. what we grew up with as it's familiar or fancy or, you know, I think that's what's familiar to them. Yeah. So my thought is like, and she was like, you really picked this out? So I think the fact that I like chose the pieces and I hunt the piece. And when I come home now, I'm like, I found a spoon and a fork today. Like, I think that will mean a lot to her. So I hope so. I mean, as long as I get one of them or, you know, I have two boys. So as long as I get two wives that like that, I really, it's all I need. That could you be know, I mean, my husband. Right? Take it through the butler's pantry and be like, thoughts. You know? <laughs> what is your thought on blue and white? Right? <laughs> Where do you stand on, you know, she's like, the past, and like, what do you stand on world peace? But I'm like, where do you stand on flavors of champagne? That's right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think that like, I'm an only child. So, I mean, I got, I get it all. Um, but my husband's one of three and um, two of the boys are very sentimental and want things. And then one of them is like, you know, not really, not as sentimental, but his wife is. So I think it just kind of like, if that makes sense, mixes all together, but we definitely have the theory of like, you know, I might not want the family crest, but you should have it, you know, because it needs to stay here. Right. So I'm hoping because we are a very close knit family that that gets, you know, passed down. And my kids are the same way. I have this, um, my grandmother made quilts as many grandmothers did. And the other day I pulled it out. It's been, you know, kind of chilly here in Washington. And I pulled it out and my son and I were snuggling under it on the couch and it has, you know, rips and it smells oh. old and it's, it was heaven. And oh. I was just giggling to myself thinking she would love this like this would thrill her to no end to know that her great grandbaby and his you know precious little four-year-old feet were cuddling with me under this blanket next to the fire like this would thrill her to no end yeah I think it's also very interesting 
you know, what they will want. So when my grandmother passed away, I had a list of like four things I wanted. Um, none of them were worth any value, but to me, um, but one of the things I wanted was her jello molds and they're like gray and it's like a little cup and it has a little pedestal on the bottom with like a lid. And she would, you know, you'd open up the refrigerator and she'd always have like stacks and stacks of like jello. Um, and I mean, I was like ready to like fight someone over this. <laughs> so they're probably worth like 10 cents. I don't yeah. care. It meant the world to me. The other thing I wanted was like the nightgown and the robe that she wore, you know, a lot. Um, and I still like have it in a bag and every once in a while, I like open it and smell it. Um, but, you know, I think it's always interesting what people, I don't know. I hope I've written down some things that I want them to have. Um, but who knows what they'll, you know, want, if that makes sense to you. I'm sure they're going to be selling this for 50 bucks. <laughs> I'll buy it Paige. I'll keep it. Well, in my honey, I will get, I'll put your name on the bottom. Like, I'll keep it in my family. My family. <laughs> with a tape gotcha. she's flipping over and you'd be like why does that say judy <laughs> my mother has already claimed it <laughs> well Paige, i cannot thank you enough for today you were me so sweet this time and to educate us on blue willow and other blue and white patterns um thank you i really appreciate it you are so sweet and i can't thank you enough well, I told you when you, you know, reached out and emailed me, like, this is an honor for me to get to talk about things that I love. Um, and I learn a lot from other people. So hopefully, you know, this will be good for someone who's interested. Everybody, this is Paige Muneer at The Pink Clutch. And like she said, she just started a new um, online retail adventure. So go follow Shop The Pink Clutch. She has the best things that she is selling. And like you. she said, a lot of it's from her house. So you know it's good if it's yes. from her personal collection. Yes, a lot of that one in, one out. That's right. Thank you so much, Paige. Mm -hmm.